today we're going to be looking at that topic that you, you know a lot of people uh don't know too well you know it's not culturally something we don't really go for even when there's a need to people have various misconceptions about it so we're here to you know clarify some things and we're talking about adoption the dynamics of adoption you might have heard of it you might you know some people do it uh but what is it really so to help us dissect this uh, i'll just hand over to Uncle Kingsley. So tell us what is adoption is, and why do we need it? This sounded like a lecture hall. Yeah, why do, why, why do <laughs> we need it? Us. Yeah. Why do we have to adopt? Of course, yeah. adoption is one of the means of um, having children, of um, parenting or raising kids. Mm-hmm. You have normal natural birth. You have um, surrogacy. You have um, assisted reproductive conception. You know. Um, um, uh, you have um, which one now? You have fostering. So adoption is one of them. So if, if couples who have waited for kids for several years mm-hmm. and um, they are not able to take advantage of assisted reproductive uh, treatment, mm. adoption provides an alternative for them. And um, there's really, for those who don't understand adoption, especially in our climate where mm-hmm. we're not an adoption friendly society, um, you can stigmatize, you can, demis- you can mystify you can also attach all manner of um should i say misconceptions around adoption but it is just what it is it is another way of having children and raising them well if you have what it takes to love children who really don't have to come from your lions or your your womb you know okay okay Mm. so what do you think are like the uh, emotional emotional or psychological effects that uh, the challenges that the adoptive parents parents may go go through through now. now Uh, there is the adjustment period there's the reality of adjustment which everybody goes through even natural birth if your wife is pregnant Mm. you're adjusting when the baby comes you are adjusting it so the same thing when you have when you adopt a child the child comes into your home you start to adjust to that child i think the real adjustment which um because whether it's natural birth or adopt uh, um, adoptive um parenting or adoption rather there is still an adjustment and it is also emotional and physical it's even financial but what the real adjustment in this in this instance is what i what i think the cultural sentiment mm-hmm. that's associated with adoption so not be me born the speaking you know that kind of thing yeah. mm-hmm. whereas that is your child actually that's your child mm-hmm. you know i'm an adoptive parent and you all know that and mm. my kids are my kids so what 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 was that the so, process of telling people because uh, you know mm. there's this uh, i don't know this challenge in trying mm. to always explain yourself yeah. to people so why, why, why is it tall yeah. why are you dark well, what's the complexion yeah. how come the nose and is can pointed be quite sensitive to yeah the you see, that's and the child why, yeah. that's yeah. why um i usually advise um we i started a movement recently or rather a campaign with a with an organization um it's called SACS. and what we actually were trying to do is to make adoption demystify adoption and make it um um should i say something to look forward to but you see there's a process that we recommend and which is pre-adoption counseling mm. because take it or leave it when a woman is pregnant she there are mood swings isn't it mm-hmm. there's a lot of changes that comes that she experiences she goes through the same thing happens with adoption but the difference in this instance is that while the baby in the woman's womb is responsible for these changes in her system what is responsible for these emotional uh, um, you know changes that require some adjustment has to do with fear mm. what if <laughs> what if and what if i don't want to repeat the narrative that is really mm. really for me it's bs but there are questions what if i adopt a child whose mother was a mm. uh, psychotic patient what if i adopt a child who comes from a lineage uh, lineage of um ancestral uh, uh, you know those kind of problems things. yes <laughs> <laughs> now these are the things that you hear and they mm. are ridiculous so to say they mm. are really really ridiculous so you find all the guys who are so pro 
um, fire falling down, demons casting, mm -hmm. chasing. They don't endorse it. adoption because of this. Mm. So you hear things about um, ancestral curses, and so I would rather deal with the ancestral curse or curses that I'm aware of. Mm. than this one that I don't know where they come from. You get it? Mm. So that is one of, those are some of the factors that actually hinder adoption in our climate here. Mm. Otherwise, it is, it is Now, now um, one of the issues we have, or one of the things happening right now in Nigeria, when you look at the cultural aspect, is yes. adoption is seen also as something you do when you cannot have your own children. Yeah. Right? So most times, I mean, you said you're, you've, you've, you've uh, owned only that you're an adoptive uh, parent. And but I have biological. They have biological children. children. But now, I don't like drawing the line now because. You, yes, yeah, you don't like drawing the line. Good, but I, I I suspect that the pressure is different. If for somebody the person only has children that he or she adopted, mm. there is this feeling, and pressure that the fact that the, the public puts on you that oh, in all you do, these children are not yours, as opposed to when you have your own children, mm. and you have a children that you adopted that way, nobody can claim mm. you are the woman is barren. Yeah. In quote. The pressure is the same. My kids, from afar, I mean, they look so much alike. But if you come close and you don't mind your business, <laughs> you might get to know. I like that. There's a difference. You might notice some. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Now, my adopted kids are fair, really fair. I'm fair a bit, mm. so you may excuse that, but they are taller. So, like I said, you need to be minding my business to really know that these kids are different. So, I'm still under pressure, but nobody expresses that pressure because I'm very, very outspoken about this. So, oftentimes, I think the pressure is brought upon us by, by our attitude because there is self-stigma mm -hmm. when it comes to adoption and infertility. The self-stigma is bigger than what anybody else is saying. So, we, anywhere, whether it's body shaming, whether it's, um, name it, self-stigma is itself destructive. So, mm. if you have children, it might, if you have kids who people feel, ah, how come you say this person is your sister and you don't look alike? Now, that's one. I think in the absence of self-stigmatization, right, mm -hmm. stigmatization, you can cope. You can cope. If you are properly counseled as you go into adoption now mm. do you know the reason baby factories are springing up everywhere do you know why we have baby factories because hush hush is the word when it comes to adoption yeah mm. so baby factories provide that clandestine you get it opportunity for people to just buy babies and pretend you, yeah, you get better them yeah but that's not it Whoever is going to pry into your affairs will still pry into your affairs. When a woman starts to pretend that she's pregnant because she's walking towards buying a buying baby, a baby. Get mm. so why don't you just take yourself off that dirt and accept the decency of adopting a child? You get it? Because a child that you bought, you didn't adopt, you stole, mm. you bought, or whatever it is. That is stigmatizing in itself because it's going to haunt you for life. No matter what your intentions are, whether you want to take care of this child or not. So, I think what we need to advocate for as a society is a society where when a woman is about to adopt a child because mm. she's accepted the fact that, hey, come on, I have what it takes to raise a child. I have the heart to love a child. However, the one who gives hasn't given me one such that will come from my womb or from my lawns. Now, I have an opportunity to do the same thing I would have done for a biological child, for another child. You know, when we were, um, okay, let me be, let me use the, our normal Christianism. When I was trusting God, <laughs> yeah, I, I had, um, should I use, should I preach? Did right, I, yeah, okay. yes. I had I had an encounter. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to sound spirit. And I, I had the statement. It was so compelling. It was so powerful. And you know what? They say, you know, God was telling me that uh, I've already made you a father. And you don't have to be a biological father to be a father. 
the father i've made you it's for you to bring my will to pass in the life of a child anybody who does that is the one i consider a father mm. for me that was the end of the story i stopped praying for a child immediately i had those words i told my wife such we're not praying anymore and we did not pray and i said it and i keep saying it that if i never had biological children i would not wait for 10 years for a child mm. Mm. no we not Okay, <coughs> it's in a one lifestyle station, station 61051. So, messages are already popping in on our WhatsApp uh, line uh, this morning. We'll be taking them in a moment. We're still talking about adoption. That's right. So, let, let, let me ask a question right That's now. Right. Um, what time, and is it, is it important that a parent should um, reveal to the child yes. that you are adopted? Yeah. And what age is the right age to do that? When the child starts to ask questions. Whenever. Whenever, if the child, the child is not is asking, asking questions, questions, the moment the child is about to become an, um, a teenager, mm -hmm. you sit the child down and, and engage and with the child. Yes, it won't make any difference in your relationship with the child. It's just that, just know it. But the reason is, it's best you tell the child than for somebody else to, to, to yeah, tell the child. Insinuate yes. that. But often, mm. it if you're properly guided, if you've loved this child, um, we just told our kids. Um, during the long holiday mm. last month and it didn't change anything mm. it never it didn't change anything it, it was a fantastic conversation in fact they were asking all manner of questions <laughs> you know <laughs> and we were there to provide and you know at the end of the day they were so overwhelmed that ah really is this how it is ah and we don't even know the difference mm. but here we are so often if you for those like like i said it's even more difficult when you have a mixed case you know ha. but where the child is the only uh, um, the adopted child is the only child or you've adopted siblings that <coughs> also helps a lot if you have if you let's say you've adopted three siblings and you didn't have a biological child it works, it works so well mm. you get it it works perfectly now if you've adopted two kids and they are from different sources you can also manage it well and let them know um I, I tell people when you're breaking this news it doesn't really change a thing the children will love you more if you have really really loved them that's the truth because you see once in a while i always cancel take your adopted child to visit an orphanage let the child see this orphanage and let the child know that these children they are orphans you would have been like them okay but we love you and you have a home actually adoption helps you reduce the number of yeah. orphans literally in the yeah. street you get it and in and in orphanages mm. you get it Maybe so you yeah I wa so I, I i watched the movie over the weekend instant family it was released in 2018 mark Wahlberg, mm. rose vine octavia spencer as well and it was about you know adoption and i was just looking at you know how thorough the ad ad uh, the adoption process was or is over there, over there you yeah. know in developed countries and i mean you have <laughs> first-hand experience how is it here in nigeria ah, boy, it's a put off mm. it's a big put off right and that's why we're actually in this doing this and trying to ensure that um, the process is seamless you 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 have cases of people who um government workers who frustrate couples who want to adopt wow the, the, yeah really? yes and they do this because they feel um and you can have a child so you are at my mercy, mercy you mm. get it and it's also because adoption is stigmatized you know the way you describe adoption, adoption this, this is, is my, my metaphor, metaphor for that, for that. I, I always describe, describe it as the, um a man who is going to a brother you don't throw with your <laughs> with your chest in the broad day a married man who is going to a brother you go to you go in the night don't ask me if i've gone there i've not gone <laughs> there <laughs> so that's the way we go when that's what we do when we want, want to adopt mm. and we're saying no it's honorable it's a big deal as a matter of fact plan a baby shower invite your friends i'm about to do this let them come and rally around you so um baby it's tough yeah. it's um it's, it's it's not seamless but we're trying to ensure it is seamless okay and we're hoping that by the time people you have this hand holding mm. 
that we intend to do for couples. It okay. will take off all the bottom. All right. all right, let's quickly take some messages. Uh, this one is from OK. He says, good morning, Uncle Kingsley. Are you trying to play down the fact that an adopted sh- child could biologically possess a trait of the biological parents? Isn't that a thing to worry about? Oh, no, what? I mean, that's no big deal. My kids have all my traits. They do. They do. I, I don't think that's it. That's nothing to worry about. Mm. 